Probably the biggest fear of any backpacker is a wet tent, but it can be hard to tell if a tent is leaking or if it's just suffering from excessive condensation. Today, I wanna to talk about both and what you can do about it, starting with a leak. So a tent might leak for a lot of different reasons. Most nylon or polyester tents have a durable water repellent finish, or in some cases, a silicon coating that makes the material waterproof. But after time, wear and tear can deteriorate that waterproof coating. Now, if you suspect that this is what has happened to your tent, it's really easy to test and find out. Does water bead up and roll off the fly? If it doesn't, well, then you need to retreat it. And it's super easy to fix using a spray-on waterproofing like Nikwax Solarproof. Now, full disclosure, Nikwax Nick Wax has sponsored this video, but if you know me, then you know that I love Nick Wax products and I've been using them for years. And Solarproof is super simple to use. Clean your tent first with Nick Wax Tent Wash because the key to a good waterproofing is a good cleaning. All you got to do is set up the tent, spray on the tent wash, scrub it down with a soft cloth, and then rinse it off of the water. No need to let it dry, just go straight to spraying on the Solarproof and let that sit for a minute, then wipe off the excess with a soft cloth and your tent is good to go. Now, you may be wondering why it's called solar proof and not waterproof or something like that. And it's because not only does it waterproof your tent, but it also protects it from UV damage. If you didn't know, one of the most harmful things to your tent's longevity is sun exposure, which really sucks because if you think about it, we set up our tents in the sun and then we basically leave them there for hours on end. So to give you an idea of just how harmful the sun can be, I've got two small scraps of tent material. One I treated with Nick Wax Solar Proof and the other one I left untreated. And then I left them out in the sun day in and day out for a little more than three weeks. And so watch what happens when I try to tear this untreated piece of tent material. See how easy it was to tear that? And now watch what happens when I try to tear the treated piece of the tent material. Well, it tore pretty quickly just as well. Okay, so I'm gonna try that again. This is the untreated piece of tent material. So I'm just gonna try to pull it apart right here. Oh, okay, so I just pulled straight across that time. I didn't give any tearing action. Let's see if I can do the same thing with the treated piece of material, see if it will pull apart like that. Okay. And so I cannot tear that apart. Okay, so I've got a problem here in the fact that I have torn my untreated scrap piece of material into four small squares and um, I'm having a hard time tearing them any further than that because of how small they are. My treated piece of tent material I've gotten into two small rectangles and I can't quite tear them any further. Oh there it goes. My goodness I took quite a bit of force though. So just trying to pull straight across it instead of giving it a nice tearing action. It finally did pop. Okay, so I don't know how scientific my little experiment was, but I think it goes to show just how damaging UV light can be. When I went to rip the two pieces of tent material, they both ripped pretty easily, but I think that would be true of brand new tent material as well. When I pulled on them instead of trying to rip them, applying the same type of force your tent might experience when you're, say, tightening down the guy lines, the untreated tent material ripped with a whole lot less force. So is Solarproof going to work miracles with your old tent? Probably not, but I do think it'll go a long way to preventing premature tearing and degradation. Okay, back to leaking tents for a minute. If you have treated your tent with solar proof and it's still leaking, then it might be your seam sealer. Look, tents are sewn together, right? And that basically means a needle has pounded countless holes where water can get in all along the seams. So every tent needs to have its seams sealed. Some tents are seam sealed from the factory and some you have to seam seal yourself. If yours was sealed from the factory, it can still deteriorate over time. So if you have an older tent that has started leaking at the seams, just get some seam sealer and go over all the seams one more time to seal it all up. Now, tent condensation may be one of the most persistent issues that we deal with while backpacking, even with a brand new tent. While some tents do better than others, it ultimately doesn't matter. You will at some point deal with condensation. Just like when you get out of the shower and the mirror is all fogged up. Is there somebody in here? 
Condensation happens when water vapor that is getting warmed up inside your tent hits the cooler outer wall of your tent and condenses back into water droplets. Even in the most dry of climates, you will still deal with water vapor because everyone exhales about a liter of water through the course of the night. If you have two people in your tent, well, that's two liters of water just waiting to condense on the outer wall of your tent. And that's the best case scenario. There are some things that could make it worse and there are some things that could make it better. When it comes to controlling condensation, the best defense is ventilation. Some tents have better ventilation with large vents at the top or ways to prop windows open and things like that. And you may have even seen large features like these big cutouts on modern tents. These are all features that are used to help reduce condensation. But even if you don't have features like that, you can still control ventilation by simply opening up the fly. Anything Anything that gets more airflow in the tent will help clear out water vapor before it condenses. Now, ultralight tents, tarps, and things like that are usually easier to ventilate because, well, they need to be. In a single wall tent, you are much more likely to accidentally brush up against the wall of the tent and get all that condensation on you or your sleeping bag. Better ventilation helps reduce condensation, but it can also make these shelters feel kind of drafty in cooler weather. So there's definitely a trade-off. Double wall tents don't manage condensation as well, but what they do is they move condensation away from you. All that vapor that you breathe out can easily pass through the mesh of the inner layer and condense on the outer layer, making it much less likely that you are going to get you or your gear wet. But no matter what tent you have, the best way to manage condensation is through campsite selection. For instance, camping near streams, lakes, or marshy areas will increase condensation because those areas tend to have higher humidity. But you have to weigh the positives with the negatives here because as nice as minimizing humidity is, sometimes camping next to a water source is even nicer. But if you are willing to move away from water sources, then make sure that you aren't camping in low-lying areas that tend to trap cool air and increase the likelihood that condensation will form. And if you have wet gear and clothes, it can be really tempting to bring them inside your tent to dry. But as they dry, all that water is just going to condense on the wall of your tent. So if you can dry your gear outside, that's typically best. So if you are finding water in your tent, most likely it's condensation. But sometimes it is a leak. The good news is, is a leak is a lot cheaper to fix than buying a new tent. Either way, I hope you found this video helpful. For even more tips about backpacking, be sure to check out this playlist right here. Like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching.